Well, there was a 2019 Kellogg report that revealed across all age groups from infant to 70 plus, the four-wheel motorbike is the leading cause of death on farm. 154 deaths on New Zealand farms between two, uh, t- sorry, 2011 and two, uh, 2018. Quad bikes accounted for 25% of them. So ACC have received 822 claims, uh, costing $5.7 million to the organisation. So they are now subsidising the cost of crash protection, such as roll bars, on quad bikes. However, there is a lot of commentary uh, from the wider community saying, hang on, is it really the bike's fault or is there uh, wider uh, issues here at play? We've talked on Serious Country a lot around fatigue being a huge health and safety uh, factor. The Motor Industry Association Chair Simon Mead joins us now to share his opinion and insights around providing a subsidy on a non-regulated standard. Simon, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, It's interesting to make sure that we're highlighting it from every angle. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to be on the show. Uh, look, as I said, we represent uh, the MIA, the Motor Industry Association, and, and we cover basically all the uh, main importers for ATV and the side-by-side vehicles. Uh, our position on rollover protection and so-called crush protection devices really is, is very straightforward. We don't have an opinion uh, as, as such uh, whether they're for or against. What we, what we are promoting, first of all, is the five, five basic rules which, which we want to reiterate, which is that you know, always wear a helmet. That's the, one of the key first things that we, we'd like to recommend. Second thing is, you know, riders be trained. I mean, and, and that's, that's, that's a common sense approach. Choose the right vehicle for the job and don't let children under the age of 16 ride ATV. Now, you know, this has always been, uh, I know farmers, uh, you know, will argue quite often that they need the help around the, the properties and so forth, but it's been a very strong point of ours that, that children don't have the cognitive ability uh, at, you know, at a young age to operate large full-size ATV, and they don't have the strength, and we all know that ATV need an active riding in order to be able to operate them. They're not a, a stationary device. You don't just sit on the seat. And the very last and also important is not to take passengers unless the quad's designed um, for them. The particular uh, subsidy on this halo-like shape um, uh, roll protection that is uh, it's being suggested on quad bikes. Uh, Simon, I have actually been on farm and uh, spoken to farmers specifically about this particular product and heard about how it saved their lives from being able to bounce off them. So wouldn't getting in behind a subsidy from ACC be a positive thing? I think the important thing, um, Sarah, is that from an MIA position on this, what we're saying is that the 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 quad bar and the hoop shaped device, uh, the two different devices that they being subsidised uh, have not been tested, and all have standards approved. They're they're an untested uh, product, and you know our our message is let's. There is no empirical evidence to, su- to support the fitting or the not fitting of the, of the devices. There hasn't been testing. Uh, there hasn't been the thorough engineering put behind uh, the fitment of the devices. And what we'd like to see as an industry is a thorough and rigorous testing program that would support a standard for such a device. And what learnings have you taken from Australia and their focus on it because I I understand that they uh, certainly are very hot on ensuring um, that this form of modification uh, can be part of the future of the safety of the rider. Well, what, what we look, when we look at Australia, obviously they've come to a, a conclusion that mandatory fitment of ROPS is the, is the way forward. Uh, we, I believe, as a country we're more pragmatic than that we're able to develop some better understandings of how our ATV are used within the country and, and what is the best outcome for our farmers and I think as as farmers uh, go forward what we need to look at is what do you what is the ATV being used for is it the right is it the right vehicle for the job and is the fitment of rollover protection uh, the right the right solution or is another vehicle uh, a better solution for the for the job 
Yeah, and certainly in places that I have seen um, uh, ATVs taken, you know, it it has replaced the horse, but the horse could have been a safer option um, to slow down and even just the two feet that we were born with as well. Well, I've been been in the industry for 36 years and um, a great majority of that is working with farmers and I know this is a very emotional subject, but we have to be clear that there isn't currently empirical evidence to support the design functionality of the rollover protection. Not all rolls happen from a roll over on a lateral side to side position. Some of them are in for end. So what we have to look at is what does that bar look like when it's coming down on top of you from behind? It's in for an end for end. And that's a more common accident than you would believe. Obviously riding down a steep hill, the front wheels get caught in a rut and all of a sudden the, the, the vehicle rotates around the front wheels. Um, you know, when we talk to farmers about the accidents they've had, quite often it's, as you said, rider fatigue. Uh, they've made bad decisions. They received poor instructions from their farm manager as to what areas of the farm they can ride on and which, which areas they can't. So really, as a farm owner, they need to be setting you know, boundaries for workers and maybe no-go areas uh, for ATV. And again, even simple, um, as simple as uh, towing trailers, for instance, we all have uh, towing weight maximum limits. But that's only on flat ground. But often when you read the, the owner's manual, it'll say 450 kilos on flat level terrain. When you get on a hill, things change really quickly. Yeah, and not many of us are reading that um, as bedtime reading uh, regularly, are we? Um, and I no. understand there's a lot of corporate groups, the likes of Dairy Holdings, they're taking a wider approach to their health and safety and around bikes. What work is the Motor Industry Association doing on you know, a driver training, driver awareness, um, actually supporting uh, the, the wider crash data um, that ACC is simply running on? Well, we, we're working with our dealer network to support the, the handover process to farmers to, to make sure that they understand how their vehicle operates and then whether they're buying the right vehicle for the job. In the instance of side-by-sides, as we call them, our UTVs, you know, they're designed to be operated with the seat belts and the doors and rollover protection that have on the uh, cage type uh, protection system on them. They need to have a seat belt on, they need to have the doors closed and they need to have a helmet on if it's recommended to be used with a helmet. This is the sort of education process that we're working through. The same with uh, the ATV. You know, the accessories quite often that are fitted to ATVs aren't suitable. The perimeter bars, for instance, they create pinch points. The tow bars, they're towing uh, far too big a trailers yeah, these are the sort of education processes that we're working through when we're de- trying to deliver ATV and cyber sites, helping the customer make the right decision, not necessarily based on the lowest cost, but the right vehicle for the job. Mm. Uh, wouldn't it be a good thing to just to have all the tools that you can for safety? You speak of helmets, uh, but is it really uh, that bad to modify the likes of these roll bars on it so that you're safe from all aspects? I think the I think the misunderstanding is whether a rollover protection bar actually provides any extra safety in all accidents or some accidents because, as I said uh, originally, we haven't seen the data set, the engineering data, to support the fitment or non-fitment. This is what we're asking for. Uh, I think it's, it's it's like any change. We're, we're very good uh, as a country at making things out of number eight wire. And, you know, we're talking about multinational companies that have developed ATVs. They're obviously keen to make sure they're as safe as possible so we sell more. We need to uh, really engage on whether you know the rollover protection, so-called crush protection devices, actually provide a safer option. Yeah, and it's interesting. You see the likes of even our helicopters here in New Zealand. We take, uh, you know, our machines and we push them to the nth degree compared to probably where they were designed and engineered internationally as well, Simon. Absolutely, we're we are a bit of a country of risk takers, and that doesn't help us in our cause quite often. And you know. As I, as I said, we don't want to have a, a for or against stance. We're very much neutral on this. But what we would say is, as, as with anything, let's see the engineering. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Simon Mead there, the chair of the Motor Industries Association. 